Welcome back. So last time we took a look at some of the blocks in the game. So I just basically took you on a little tour of all the different blocks that you can use, the different colors that are available. And we just had a little look at how the textures connect and things like that. This time we're gonna take a look at a couple of doors. So these are put together using the logic system and a few of the blocks and uh, rotors and whatnot, or rotors or rails. So this one's a rail door. Okay, so it's gonna open into there. This one I think was inspired by a tutorial I saw by another YouTuber and um, all I've done is just made it a little bit wider and used a slightly different wedge but it's essentially the same uh, design. We've hooked up these screens to the uh, rails, you can see the links there um, and essentially you hit this button it closes, you hit this button it opens. Okay. I will do a couple of tutorials on how to put these things together, but it's pretty simple once you've got grasp of the basics. Okay, so like I say, up here is the wiring for it. It's really quite simple. This button links into this input, and then the dual goes, sorry, that button links into the mix gate. The mix gate has an A and a B. The A is set to zero, the B is set to one and then the out goes into the jewel and then the jewel goes to each rotor I mean each rail I hope you can see that so then when you hit it open it goes now I like one button push but uh, we'll get into that in a tutorial about all that sort of stuff but at the moment if you just hit it it opens if you go to the other side because you're probably thinking oh does it work from the other side yeah it does but sometimes you'll have to. Oh well. Ah, oh yeah, yeah. No? Okay, well, maybe not then. Sometimes you have to um, hit the switch twice because of the zero or the one being the wrong way around and stuff. But that's by the by. So, that's your basic rail door. It's very simple. You can see you just you build the two doorways, put the rails down. And then put these doors on and they'll not they'll clip I mean I don't know if it's ever, nothing is final here so the non-physical nature of some of these designs may not work in future uh, there's been a lot of discussion about this recently as far as I, as far as I could tell um, so yeah we'll we'll see but um, at the moment they're non-physical you know the, the entities that move are non-physical but like I say this is how it works at the moment. If it changes, I'll let you know. So open it goes. Let's move on to the next one. So I think this one is using. Oh no, this one's this one's a rotor as a, a rail as well. It's going up. Now, obviously, the problem with this door is you can see there that's that's the whole footprint when it's open. So if these doors opened any more, they'd stick out, which would make the whole thing wider. And obviously, if you had like a floor above this door. Well, now you've got a door sticking up in the middle of your room. So it's not it's not the best thing. I mean, yeah, you could do it and it's going to look fine, especially if it's like an outer door or something like that. It's just going to slide up over the top of this. It's not going to be a big deal. But if you've got it in interior, it might be quite, you know, in a tight space. It might be quite impractical to do it like that. So, and I so say you can see how this works. I hope it's just a rail, build the door in one piece hit the button same as before mix gate okay so then I came to this now this is this is what I wanted to show you before if we hook up the switch and the button to the same rail this button is indicating the rail okay whether it's active so if we hit this button it doesn't do anything because the button always sends us a sends a one so one is there okay and zero is there so as you can see when i hit it there it was on zero to one did nothing so if i send it back with the switch and then hit the button i can send it back but then the button doesn't do anything now you can take advantage of that and use that 
uh, obviously this is sending a zero and that's sending a one sending a zero and off it goes so it's just an interesting little thing about the uh, way it's set up anyway i hope i hope that made sense <laughs> Leave us a comment if it didn't make any sense and I'll go over it in more detail. Basically, uh, here we are moving on to rotors now. So we've got the sideways opening door. Okay, it looks quite clean. It's really simple. Look at it from the other side. Okay, now I've hidden the rotor. This is all symmetry, so I've cleaned it up. There's the rotor. Rotor's there. If you look at this one, you can see the uh, this one has everything put on it. <laughs> so for this one, we're using a mix gate. Probably don't need it, but um, just to make sure that the angle is correct. So 360, and then B is set to 270. So it only moves 90 degrees. As you can see here, we've got the uh, setting. So it's at 271 move it back it's at 360 359 okay the idea is obviously so it doesn't rotate through everything and it looks kind of clean and controlled so there we have a rotor door okay and what have we got next what's this i can't see ah yes a rotor door for a hatch going down below your ship so boom down it goes and this could be a hanger open it up yeah there you go and we've got an exterior switch if you're wondering about the station it used to be down there but i accidentally reloaded it over another ship <laughs> and it turned my other ship into this one <laughs> learning curve <laughs> so anyway that is the rotors just there um, I don't think I did any more with the rotors, so we're going to move on. Here is somewhere where I was trying to make um, a T-flip with a bunch of ands and ors, and you can't link ands and ors together, so don't bother. Uh, I found that out here. Um, right, so anyway, are these ones hooked up? No. I bet none of them are hooked up. Are these ones hooked up? No. Okay, right. Put on that so just to show you these hinges there's a couple of different hinges in the game so we've got this hinge which is flat now so that currently is a zero so that is like i say that's zero so we put it in that's one and it closes to 90 degrees you can remove these these bricks but sometimes you'll remove the brick it's on so I like to be a bit careful. I mean, just out, just so you can see, it, it doesn't matter if you remove uh, that block; it won't destroy the hinge. But you don't want to destroy the actual hinge. So, like I say, if I take this that out now, and then put this put this back. Yep. See. Yep. Yep. There we go. Right. And it can it can help with the clipping, but. Like I say, if you've got a lot of hinges, I haven't bothered in a lot of these designs to take out the extra bit. But that's how you do it. Again, you can open it, but you can't, can't close it. Moving on to the next hinge. So this, is, I think, is just one piece. Yeah, so... Whoops. Uh -huh. It's obviously not connected to anything, so... Okay, so this one's, yeah, that one's going to open it to there. What's going on here then? All right. Okay, so we've got another 90 degree hinge. All right. Yeah, yeah. So this one starts off, you can see it's flat there. And when you activate it, it folds that way, whereas this one goes to there I know it's a subtle difference I know but they're they're mounted on the same face so you can I hope you can see like this one mounts things on the side and then opens them 90 degrees to here whereas this one 
starts uh, sort of open and then closes. It's just it's just the opposite, I guess. But yeah, it offers a lot of versatility. Okay, and then finally we've got this last one, and this last one's very special. Now I think this one goes all the way, if I remember right. So, boom. Yeah, this one goes. It's a 270, is it? Can't tell, or is it 180? I think it's 180 degrees. So these have the effect of actually folding it, things in on themselves, which is something I'm going to explore in a couple of the builds which we're going to come and look at next. Okay. So now we're going to take a little look at some of these. Okay, so first thing I did was I made a little half slab hinge just to demo what you could do with these little hinges here. So as you can see there, we're opening and closing the door. Pretty simple stuff. All that is, is a hinge and a half slab. Very small, very compact. It doesn't look pretty, but you can actually put decorative things on the doors quite easily. All right. So over here we have, let's see, this one's got, yeah, so this is a button and a knot. So this is how I've gotten around the whole toggle thing. So we open this and then red one to close it. It can be useful to have a different circuit once you get into animating the doors. Sometimes you don't want them to go back the same way. An example was the sign. The sign doesn't close the same way that it opens. It closes instantly, but it opens on a stat on like the delay pattern. Anyway, so open and close. Just went for the double door version of that. Okay, so then we get into this one. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one next. So this one here was the next thing that I come up with. So this is just a sort of started off with an idea and just kept taking it further and further so here we have a door that rolls around on itself and kind of stacks away into the corner there it's quite interesting we go through it's all right looks nice there we go so that's pretty straightforward again it's a bunch of columns on hinges the hinges are on delays and it's all stacked through a quad gate so they all go through i think the delays are probably on different times or something so it actually opens 0.25 second delay for each joint so you get that nice open and close and again the open and the close circuit one of them's inverted okay that's for the red button so let's take a look at this one. Uh, this one here is another disappearing door. I mean, I've done my best here to cover this up. Um, let me just see. Obviously, you make these as big as you want, you know. This could be 10 high, this could be 10 high. Could be it doesn't matter. The uh, system's pretty di pretty pretty. Um, it's pretty. F there's a lot of freedom in the design at the moment. I don't know whether there's going to be restrictions added later on. Whether these sorts of things are going to be impossible. Um, but I've got to say, it's drawn me to the game a lot. I know a lot of people have seen some of the images I put up, and um, they're like, "How do I get this game?" And, they, know they obviously have ideas of their own. It really lets you take your imagination and run a little wild with it. So, anyway, I wasn't happy with the, the thing being in the middle here. Okay, I just wanted a nice animation, a nice door animation. Um, and I think recently they actually did. I found out after I started all this, there was some kind of doors competition. And they had some really impressive doors. Doors that would make these look like child's play. I've got to say, the winner of that Doors competition. I'll see if I can find a GIF and put it into the video. But uh, it was really impressive. And um, 
I'd have no idea how he did it. So yeah, fair, fair play, hat nod, and all that. But uh, I used to build some crazy doors in other games, so this is um, this is a lot of fun. I mean, it all goes back to the old Minecraft three by three, four by uh, five by five, and you know all those crazy uh, redstone uh, piston doors that were just ridiculously overcomplicated. So anyway, we've had a look at this one. Let's move on. So over here we have another gate, and I think this was the beginning of a new idea. Yeah, it was. So we'll close this one. I wanted a sort of like like the sort of liquid metal deformation. So here, here we have the opening. It sort of scrunches up like a fist at one end. And I like that a lot, so I decided to build it a little bit bigger. So let's see if I can't find it. I think it's down the other end. You can use the square brackets to increase your speed, but I'll do a little tutorial on that to um, when when we get into how to play. So anyway, I don't know if this one is it. I don't. Yep, yeah, this is it. And this isn't the one that's wired up. Made it all in symmetry. Wait, no, wait, no. Yeah, it is actually. Here we go. Look at this. And it's open. So now let's cycle the gate again. It kind of compresses into nothing. I mean, I was being a little bit silly to see what I could get away with, I guess. And, you know, it offers a lot of uh, freedom. So just sort of, you come up with it, you try it out, and it works! Which is real breath of fresh air for a lot of these games. Sometimes you'll be hidden by unexplained game rules says no. <laughs> so if we walk, just walk into it. Doo -doo. And the best thing is, the wiring isn't too crazy. Each hinge has its own delay, and then it chains on to the next one. So if I was to start at the beginning, that's the close, that's the open, and then we can have a look at the links just quickly. Boop. So there you can see the delay goes from the red to this blue. And if I keep my mouse over here, you can see the links. So it's going red, blue. This is a dual, so one goes on to the next delay, and the other one goes to here, which is a dual, and that activates two hinges, and so on. And then it's just the same, all the way around in a big circle, and then that controls um, every block in the door individually. Whoops, wrong button. But I thought this looked a bit messy. So I thought to make another door which was a little bit cleaner, a little bit more practical, and this is this is it. So it's only four by four, but uh, if we open it up, it just goes up like a shutter or a glass door. It's tiled on both sides to hide all of the, um, to hide all of the hinges. So it's really clean. And, and like I say, this is the most compact design I've come up with because the, the, this here, you can build right on top of that anyway um, with like a half block as these are sticking out or with a full block and just go across. So it's not like, I'll show you, I can just put a block here, no worries, and then continue to build on whatever I'm building. So it's like the wiring doesn't actually take any space up um really and like i say uh unlike the piss unlike the sliding door or the rolling door uh with the with the rotors this one just just sidle it just you know it's just gone it's just gone it takes up 1.2 blocks of space there is a slight wedge there to hide the fact that when it's compressed the bottom layer of tile stays there and also you know, Z fighting. Control Z will undo, but we'll go over that in a proper video. So yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, I think this is the one that I'll end up using because, you know, 
It's nice and compact. The wiring is easy. It's very similar to the other one, but you know, you don't have to put a delay either. You could just activate them all at once and then you're going to save on blocks. But when you can cover it all up, it doesn't really matter. Um, controllable from both sides, yada yada yada. You know, open works. It's good. So with that, that's basically my little door demo. Um, thanks for watching. If you didn't see the last video, make sure to go check it out. We covered all the different block shapes. And then in the next video, I think what we'll do is we'll check out, um, you know, how to actually build. You know, what's the quickest way to put this wedge down, for example. What about if I wanted it the other way around? What about if I wanted it the other way around? No, not that way, that way. Yep. It's actually really quick and intuitive, but once you've got the hang of it. So we'll take a little look at that in the next episode. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. So at this point, if you want to see more content like this, hit a like, give us a subscribe. We will cover other, uh, cover other games, but we'll be following this one. And next episode, in fact, I'm going to do the how to build episode for episode four episode three will be what is this glitchy piece of craziness so we're going to do a little video on my one by one by one ship okay thanks for watching see you in the next one